Well, today we seem to have something interesting for you guys. We had picked up a value water cooling kit from PC Case Gear, and if you actually see here, it's, it is an XSPC Raza 750 RS240 Universal CPU water cooling kit. It is $139 Australian, and well, we want to see how it goes compared to an air cooler. So, here we have all our parts on the desk, which you can see here, it's all lined up. So let's actually let's actually read the spec sheet which I have here in my hand, and let's see what you get. And maybe you can sort of like pan around on the table while I read these out. Okay. So first thing we actually have support for socket seven seven five one three six six and one one five five slash one one five six, which you can see here. So it is actually support for most Intel platforms that are most common. Uh, we also have support for AM two and AM three. We have a pump slash reservoir combo which you can see over there so that would actually go into your five and a quarter bays uh, five millimeter blue LED with four pin Molex in which you can see right there so you can actually see you can pop it in the back and you can see it through the front uh, we have a 80 millimeter to 120 millimeter radiator bracket so we've actually got our radiator here if you want to have a look at this we'll actually have a look at this right now because this looks really good if you can actually see see through it looks really nice so it's a dual 120mm fan rad so we can put our fans to that in which we have our fans over here as well as grills to protect your fingers because we know people like to stick their fingers inside the fan and they get all ah <laughs> so okay so yep they're actually 1700 rpm 120mm fans as I just mentioned uh, what else have we got Two meters of clear seven and sixteenth tubing. Okay, so that's what it says. So we can actually see there. Have a look at the end of it. That's pretty much how thick it is compared to my finger now. So it's actually pretty good. We've got two meters of it, so you can cut it down. And if you're only uh, cooling your CPU or something, or one of your graphics cards, it should be plenty of length. Uh, what else have we got? The six one and a quarter inch barbs. Yep, you can see there over there in that section and we have our thermal paste as well it says on here we have we only have one thermal paste well we've actually got two here so I don't know whichever good you got a, you got yourself an extra thermal paste there okay that's pretty much all it is to say about that what we're, what we're pretty much looking to do in this video is comparing a value kit like this in which we purchased here to a actual air cooler in this case we've got a Cooler Master V8 so it's actually quite a bulky air cooler, but we're going to see if something as value as this for a value kit, we're going to see how it compares to an actual air cooler. So we're pretty much, in this video, we're going to show you that right now. So get ready to see that. Right, now that we can actually see what's going on here, we have currently our Cooler Master V8 cooler. So if you want to jump down there and see it in there, doing its thing. Okay air cooling our i5-760 at 4 gigahertz and this is what we'll be, we will be using uh, for our water cooling test so if we can see now on idle for air cooling these are our current temperatures around here so it's around the 45-40 ish mark uh, not really doing much we can see our cores are barely doing anything up here it is not really a hot day like not hotter than normal but we're actually going to run our Prime 95 test right now to see what, what max temperatures we can sort of get on our air cooler. And then later on, we can compare it to our water cooling, which you will see next after this. So if we want to start running our blend test right now, and get all those workers going, you can see all our cores are going up. All the maximum. Okay, so we, we can watch our temperatures here. We can just get sort of an average of what we're getting. Okay, so it's around the 70 mark and still creeping. So we'll just watch that for a, for a little bit. So we've actually come back after about half an hour. We've actually left this running just to get a bit more of an ideal temperature to see what it would be at under load on air. If we can actually come in and see here, you can sort of see the cores are getting kind of hot at about 86 or 83 roughly. So it's actually getting quite hot at 100% load. So that's pretty much our load on an air temperature. So now we're actually going to move over to water cooling again. Righto, so now we've actually come back to our 
official water cooling set up. Well, it's, it's all set up, it's all ready to go. We have our benchmarks ready to go. And if you actually have a look inside the case down there, you can see it's all in there looking nice. Okay. Now the go with water cooling, it usually is quiet, and that's what it normally is, but with cameraman's personal setup he has made some adjustments with uh, different types of fans and they actually are quite more noisy and more powerful to keep it cool, so just bear that in mind, that's probably why you can hear it. But uh, we are back and we are ready to test the difference between our air cooling versus water cooling. Now the first go you see here, these are our idle temperatures so far. You can see the CPU is not doing much, but the reason for those temperatures are because it is not a cold day, it is not sort of a moderate day, it is quite hot today, and that's why you cannot uh, see that there are much differences on the temperatures there. However though, once this thing gets under load, it will be, since it gets hotter, it will perform more, better, and it will sort of cool it down more when it gets under much more load. So what we're going to do again now, just like we did on the air cooling, we're going to run this for about half an hour to get an average temperature of under full load. So we've got our Prime 95 here running a blend test, so it's testing a bit of everything. And uh, we're just going to let that run. Okay, so we've got our workers going, we can see our cores climbing up, our temperatures. And we're going to come back and we're actually going to see how much of a difference it has made comparing to an air cooler. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. So now we're back after about half an hour, we can still see our workers go on here. Um, if you come over and have a look, these are our current temperatures so far. Uh, the first cores managed to get about 75 degrees, as you can see there. And yeah, it's pretty much still about 10 to 15 degrees difference, pretty much, between air cooling and water cooling. Of course we'll notice much more of a difference in the max temperature it gets under load when it does get cool weather, because it is quite really hot outside and in here as well. So it's still, it definitely still does manage to be quite a difference between air cooling and water cooling. So again with cameraman's rig it, it has done pretty good. I think this was a pretty good experiment. So thanks for watching and uh, also we now have a Facebook. So if you go to facebook.com slash Jacob's PC stuff, uh, the link is down the bottom and you can go like it and you can follow what we're doing. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.